A few months back, I planted one mango seed in each of these pots. And this pot has what you would expect, one seedling. But this pot has multiple. It has three, maybe even four seedlings growing in it, all from one seed. It turns out there are two types of mango seeds, monoembryonic and polyembryonic. Mono meaning one, poly meaning many, embryo meaning baby or cluster of cells, depending on where you get your news. But no matter what position you take, I think we could all agree that mangoes are the most delicious tropical fruit on this big round ball we call Earth. Unless you consider the Earth flat. Again, that depends on where you get your news. It's not mango season right now, so I don't have any fruit, I don't have any seeds. But let's wind the clock back a few months and take a look at a video I did where I do a close-up comparing a monoembryonic seed to a polyembryonic seed. Here we have the Tommy mango and it's monoembryonic seed. And look, it's just one big smooth seed. There's no ridges, there's no lines, there's no ability for me to break this apart and separate it. On the other hand, we have the Atulfo with its polyembryonic seed. And look, you can see one embryo here, one here, one here, one here. There's four that I count. And look, I could kind of play with them and look, I can, I can flex them. If I wanted, I could carefully separate those, right? Each of these is gonna give me a different tree. Certain varieties of mango are polyembryonic. Certain varieties of mango are monoembryonic. We are standing in front of this Mahachinook mango, which is polyembryonic. And the polyembryonic varieties, I think, offer a very unique approach to evolution. Unless, of course, you are a creationist. Mangoes that produce polyembryonic seeds are covering both their bases in the fight for survival. See, if you look real close here, you'll see one tree that's large. You'll see another one that's kind of large. And then you'll see this guy here that's smaller. This one is a runt. These two larger ones are genetic replicas of the mother tree. If the seed that grew this came from a fruit from this tree, these two big ones would grow up to be an identical DNA replica of this tree here. Or if not a 100% genetic replica of the mother tree, they're pretty darn close. But the runt, the small one, this little guy here, this one's fertilized. This one is not a clone of the mother tree. This one has a combination of DNA from another tree that pollinated the mother tree, just like human beings are a combination of the DNA of the father and the mother. Mango trees produce flowers, and the flowers, when fertilized, turn into fruit. So at some point over the next few months, all the trees in my grove will put out their flowers. And the female flowers are gonna be like, hey baby, I'm over here, I'm receptive to pollen. And the male flowers are full of pollen, and they're gonna be like, what's up? And then a common house fly or some little insect is going to buzz into a male flower and get covered in pollen, then fly to another tree with that pollen and go on to a female plant and deposit the pollen. And the resulting piece of fruit will be a combination of that father and mother tree. And for a monoembryonic variety, that's it. You got one seed, one tree, combination of mother and father. If that random combination of DNA produces a tree that for some reason doesn't thrive in the current environment, the tree dies. And if that happens too often for certain species of trees, the whole species will go away. I'm talking about survival of the species here. Like its monoembryonic cousin, the polyembryonic tree also produces a seedling that's a combination of DNA from itself and from a father tree. But it hedges its bets. It also puts out a few clones of itself. It says, look, if I'm thriving in these current environmental conditions, and these conditions persist, I want to clone on myself. I want to continue to thrive. But if things start to change, maybe we start getting more rain, we start getting less rain, we, things start getting warmer, things start getting colder, I also want to produce unique, one-of-a-kind combinations of DNA from two different trees so that I get random mutations. Most of the random mutations will die off, but every now and then you'll get some that thrive in the new conditions. That's called an adaptation, and the species of mangoes persists. So if you're the type of person who likes to plant the seeds from the fruit you eat, and sometimes you get one seedling out of a mango, and sometimes you get multiple, now you know why. Now let's talk about what to do when you get multiple trees, when you get that polyembryonic variety. So we talked about how the runt of the litter is the fertilized seedling and how the other ones are clone seedlings. 
And if the seed you planted happened to have been polyembryonic, in some ways you may have hit the lottery because the clone seedlings have two very important properties. First, they are a genetic replica, which means the fruit they produce will be identical to the fruit you ate that you planted the seed from. That's good news for you because the fertilized one, since it's a combination of DNA from two different trees, we don't know what we're going to get. Might taste great, might taste yucky, might not give you fruit at all. The second benefit you get from the clone seedlings in your polyembryonic seed is that they will produce fruit in year four. Whereas the fertilized seedling or a seedling from a monoembryonic tree might take 10, 12, even 15 years before it gives you its first fruit. So go take a look at that seed you planted. And if you see multiple seedlings coming out of it, here's what I want you to do. Prune away the runt. Now take a look at what's left and prune away the runt of what's left. And if you had even more little seedlings, you continue pruning away the runts until you're left with the strongest, most vigorous seedling. Then you set it back on your windowsill or out in your garden or wherever you had it and you care for it as you would have. And in four to five years, you're gonna have fruit. Now I know, I know, you're saying what a waste. Why would I prune away all the trees? Why don't I separate them? And I could take the fertilized one and treat it like I would treat a monoembryonic seed and graft it at some point down the road. You could do that. And you could also separate the cloned ones, separate them and separate the root systems and grow them each in their own pots and you'll have multiple cloned ones. But most backyard growers grow in a backyard. Backyards aren't huge but mango trees get huge. So if you've planted this little seedling to someday go out in the backyard and plant it, you might only have room for one or two or three mango trees at the most, or maybe you want to even put other types of fruit. But even if you're going all mango, it might make sense to put a few different varieties, but that's all personal choice. Now you know mangoes produce two types of seeds, polyembryonic and monoembryonic. You know the differences between the two. You know why they've evolved this way or why God created them this way, depending on where you get your news. And you know what to do if you've discovered you've planted a polyembryonic variety. Now, if you don't want to wait the four or five years it takes to get fruit from the polyembryonic variety or the 10 plus years it takes to get fruit from the monoembryonic variety, you can buy your fruit from us at guacfarm.com. G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M dot com. We sell our mangoes when they're in season. We got avocados just about eight, nine months of the year. We have other fruits like sapodilla, mame, monstera deliciosa. We're adding new fruits every year. And if you're not a fruit eater, you can get this shirt or this cool sleepy lizard hat. I can smell the shepherd's pie my wife is baking in the kitchen. So I'm gonna head on inside and get myself a slice. While I do that, you go to guacfarm.com and I will see you on the next video.